Hello everyone, welcome to Concept in Medicine. Today we are going to be looking at episiotomy, or what is also known as perineotomy. Let's begin. All right, so when we say episiotomy, what do we mean by that? Episiotomy or perineotomy, from the name perineotomy, is a surgically planned incision on the perineum and the posterior vaginal wall during the second stage of labor, meaning that you can only give an episiotomy during the second stage of labor. And you should also know that episiotomy or perineotomy is in fact an inflicted second degree perineal injury. In our next tutorial, we'll be talking about perineal injuries, or what we referred generally to as the perennial tears. So keep waiting. It shall come to you very soon on this channel. And kindly make sure to subscribe. And also put on a notification so that when I release that tutorial, you will not be left back. OK, let's move on. So as we are saying, that the episiotomy is, and in fact, an inflicted second degree perineal injury. And when we say second degree perineal injury, it means basically the laceration is going to involve the perineal muscles and the fascia. Later on in our next tutorial, we'll talk about that. Now, you should also know that episiotomy is the most common obstetric operation performed. When you enter into the world of obstetrics, the most common obstetric operation done is episiotomy. Now let's look at the indications for perineotomy or episiotomy. So with that, you can use the acronym RAPPOR. So in that case, we are looking at a rigid or inelastic perineum. The next one is anticipating a perineal tear. And which conditions will precipitate a perineal tear? Which conditions? So in that case, we are looking at breech presentation, big baby greater than 4 kg, shoulder dystosia, persistent occipital, posterior position, and finally, finally, is to PB's delivery. The next one is going to be a previous perineal surgery. And with the previous perineal surgery, we are talking about a pelvic floor repair and also perineal reconstructive surgery. And finally, finally, operative vaginal delivery, which includes the forceps delivery and the vacuum delivery. The operative vaginal delivery can also be referred to as the instrumental delivery. Now, let's talk about the types of perineotomy or episiotomy. So there are four types of perineotomy or episiotomy, but only two types are widely used and accepted to be used. The first one is what we call the mediolateral. So let's talk about the mediolateral perineotomy or mediolateral episiotomy. So the mediolateral episiotomy, first of all, you should know that where you have the converging lab labia minora, you have the point at which the labia minora converge. We call it the fauchet or the frenulum, or also, also known as the posterior commissure of the labia minora. So this is going to play a major role in our incision. So for the mediolateral incision, the incision is made from the midpoint of the fauchet directed downwards and outwards, either to the left or the right. And you should also know that the incision is made diagonally in a straight line, which runs about 2.5 centimeters away from the anus. And when it comes to the types of perineotomy or episiotomy, the medial lateral episiotomy is the most commonly used episiotomy. Worldwide, is the most commonly used. The second type is the median or midline episiotomy or perineotomy. For the midline or the median episiotomy, the incision begins from the center of the fauchet and extends posteriorly in the midline for about 2.5 centimeters. So it is going to be moving backwards in the midline for about 2.5 centimeters. Median or midline, once again, begins from the center of the fauchet and extends posteriorly along the midline for about 2.5 centimeters. 
The only disadvantage of the median or the midline episiotomy is that it predisposes the patient to a perennial tear in the future. The third type is what we call the lateral episiotomy. For the lateral episiotomy, it begins from about one centimeter away from the center of the forechet and extends laterally. It means before you can make the incision, you should move away from the center of the forechet about one centimeter and you begin the incision from there and extend it laterally. But for this type of episiotomy, it predisposes to chances of battling that injuries. Because of that, it is totally condemned. This particular episiotomy is no longer used anywhere. Then finally, the J-shaped episiotomy, or simply put, the J-shaped incision. For the J-shape, what is done is that the incision begins from the center of the fossette and extends posteriorly along the midline for about 1.5 centimeters and then directed downwards and outwards along 5 o'clock or 7 o'clock. So if you look at that, it will give you the letter J, either in this direction or in this direction. That is why it is known as the J-shaped episiotomy. I hope that makes sense to you. And you should also know that the J-shaped incision is also not used worldwide. So in all, only two types are used. That is the, the medial lateral, which is the most commonly used, and the median or midline episiotomy. Finally, let's look at the principles of management of the episiotomy wounds. And we are going to use a trick or an acronym called the ATA. That's the ATA to the power three R. So in that regards, we're going to have the adequate lightening, tissue exposure, anesthesia for examination because the patient will be in severe pain, analgesics because after anesthesia, the patient will still be in pain. After you finish every process, the patient will still be in pain. You will need to give uh, pain medication, that's an analgesics. Then antibiotics to cover for infections and finally repair of the wound by close up positioning and suturing. I hope the concept regarding episiotomy makes a lot of sense to you. Thank you very much for sitting through this tutorial. Kindly make sure to subscribe, put on the notification button to await more videos and also share and like and comment which concept you would like to see in my next video. And once again, this is Concept in Medicine. Bye-bye.